online. They gave me flowers now, so I have plants in my bay out here, I guess. Anyways, if you're looking to join us on these videos, you just have to go to Brantford Kia and uh, go to YouTube, sorry, and go to Brantford Kia, look for our logo there. Once you click the page exactly at two o'clock, which I'm a little early right now, it's 1.59, but the point is, yeah, there we go, exactly at two o'clock. You hit refresh on the page or you go to the page right at two o'clock and you will see the live video that we're doing. So there's our live video. You jump in here, click on the live video like this, and there we go, we are in our live video. And what that allows me to do is see the comments over here. So I'm gonna blow these up a little bit with one hand if I can. There we go, we're gonna scroll this this way. All right, so now what I've got is I've got everything I need to see some of your comments over on my TV screen over there. All right, so again, if you're uh, regular with us, you'll know I have to go through my spiel here. I am here at our dealership because I work with our service team and I help uh, a number of things that go on. So we are in our unfinished COVID video bay. This will be our video bay one day, but because of construction had to stop, we just decided to continue to use it. We do a live video every day from here. We talk about the Kia product. And uh, today we're gonna talk about the Kia Soul EV. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, before we hit that, I wanna mention that a lot of things have changed in the past few days. Uh, first of all, our sales floor was uh, basically closed. We had to work completely online. I'm just grabbing some cheat seats here. We had to work completely online for a number of weeks there. So of course, health regulations have allowed us to have sales dealerships open by appointment only. So if you wanna see a car, you can now come see that car. We can uh, do that for you. We have a number of health processes in place. So the easiest way to connect with us is just to go to our website, www.brandfordkia.com. Go to the contact us page, get in touch with a salesperson. That salesperson will be up to date with all of our, uh, all of our details and all of our safety details, tech, They'll understand what we need to do to keep you safe, to keep us safe, and to follow regulations and exceed those regulations. So you can come see cars now by appointment only. The other thing we should talk about is Kia Canada released an incredible program, which I don't know if they're gonna advertise a whole lot yet. I'm sure they will at some point, but I haven't seen it yet. But, so we still have 0% for 84 months on a couple cars. We also have, the big thing now is six months of no payments. And I'm gonna show you the real thing here. Six month payment, not deferred, they're waived. So those are waived payments on uh, the first six months of several of our vehicles. So that's the Forte, the Forte 5, the Soul, not the EV Soul, I should point out, the Sportage and the Sorento. So that's six months of Kia making your payments uh, right now. So Kia Canada has really come through. Uh, we understand people uh, are in difficult positions and these are tough times, but if you need a car or if you want a car, there literally has never been a better time in my career to buy that car. So there we go, that's good news from Kia Canada. And uh, that's about it for the news that I had to cover. Now let's dig into these cars. So we've done a live video with EVs in the past where I've talked about them and uh, I'm setting myself up for failure on a Monday afternoon because we usually have less people tuning in live for our EV videos, but they tend to have a little bit more legs and do quite well as we move on. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to talk about the cars. I've got my personal car in behind there. That is the low range Kia Soul. So it's rated for about 248 kilometers of range. This one is the higher range, rated for 383 kilometers of range. And of course, those are rated numbers. You'll see higher numbers in the cars as we go through. Um, and so we'll talk about both cars a little bit. You can ask me any question you want about these cars. We'll go through that, we'll show them. I'll do my best to answer them. If I don't have an answer, I'll try to find it for you. But a couple things I'm gonna hit on. We're gonna talk about maximizing battery life. So I found some information. It's Hyundai information, but Hyundai and Kia have the same information when it comes to batteries. Uh, battery technology is shared ex identically between the two. So I have some information that I can share about uh, maximizing your uh, battery life, which we're gonna talk about in these videos, uh, which I think is good information. And just information to have uh, in general, whether you're interested in EVs or not, something to consider. We're gonna talk about a little bit of maintenance on these cars, things that you can do um, compared to a gas car, how things are a little different. Uh, which is a good news story if you're an EV buyer. And we're also going to talk uh, about Uvo Intelligence. We're going to try that. So I have a phone over there charging in the corner on that little chair. And uh, we found a dead phone that I can, because of course I film with my phone. So this will allow us to use a phone that I can show you Uvo Intelligence on my own personal car. And some unique features that are also available just for the EV buyers if you have Uvo Intelligence. So lots to cover. We're going to be here for a half an hour or so. Um, sit back, relax. If you... Uh, don't want to stick around for half an hour, click the watch later uh, tab on this and you can watch or add to playlist. You can watch it on your watch later list. And I understand, but if you want to stick around live, here we go. All right, real quick on these cars. Let's talk about maximizing battery life. So we talked about battery range 
Um, we're going to jump in these cars in a little bit, and you're going to see that range is um, above what they are rated for. That's pretty common. Kia is uh, very good in this generation of Kia Soul about um, explaining or about giving these cars a rating for a certain amount of range. So our previous generation Soul was 179 kilometers. This one jumps up to 248, and again, this one's 383. These generations of Soul, this generation of Soul, uh, is very, uh, I would say the range is a little more pessimistic, which is a good thing. That means in the summer, you're gonna well exceed that range. Uh, and uh, in the winter, many people can stay above that rated range. Uh, some will just t brush up against it. Some will go a hair lower. It just depends on how you drive. Uh, but you don't have to be crazy conservative to get this range. And in fact, I drive fairly aggressively and I'll show you what I mean by that in my car. There's actually a gauge that tells you how much I drive economically, how much I drive normally, how much I drive aggressively. And because I've been driving my car a lot more lately than my wife, it's a little bit more realistic compared to me. So we'll talk about uh, range in those cars, but we're gonna talk about the information that I have. This is new information to me about how to extend the battery life of these things. So it's, the title was Maximizing EV Battery Life. Now I think some of this information is gonna be maximizing your range, but it, it was titled Maximizing EV Battery Life. So we're gonna talk about it. First of all, Couple things I uh, sort of had heard but never heard from Kia Hyundai. And it says avoid frequently discharging the battery to very low levels. So what that means is what is very low levels? Continuously discharging the battery to levels below 20% can result in decreased battery performance over time. Now that's the big, oh no, the car's batteries are never gonna last. The good news is just like a gasoline car sitting right outside the door there, the components in this car are designed to last the life of the car. Same as nobody walks into a dealership and says, how long is my transmission gonna last? Your transmission may or may not last the length of a car, but it's designed to last the length of the car. It shouldn't need replacing. Same thing with your battery, it shouldn't need replacing. Now, like a transmission, batteries do degrade over time. Transmissions do degrade over time. So there is a way of thinking of things. These are not like your cell phones that every two years you have to throw out because you've just killed them and that's no good. These are much different. The way they manage the battery life uh, the way the car does it is tremendous, um, but they do see battery degrade degradation over time. So one way to limit that is to avoid going basically below 20% unless you really need to. So don't regularly drive the car below 20%. Uh, for most of us with the range these cars get, that's totally fine. Even in my low range soul, I don't have a huge issue with that. Now, it's not saying you can't use that range, it's just saying don't do it every time. And I think that makes some sense. All right, the other thing that was uh, interesting to me that I'd never really heard from Kia Hyundai, they said charge more frequently, they say charge daily or every two to three days instead of only when needed. Now, I'll be honest, I tended to charge my car only when I needed to. And uh, I've kind of changed my habits. I'm now charging a little bit more often. A lot of you know that I still run on the level one charger, which is just plug it in the wall the same way you do your cell phone. And uh, that actually works quite well for my family. I do have access to a level two charger, both uh, my family around the corner from me and at my workplace. So there's, uh, I have not yet, because I recently moved into a house, I haven't really uh, done up my garage the way I want to. It's a garage that's separate from the house and I may have to rewire it to do it the way I really want to, to future-proof it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm still running on just, uh, just the uh, regular level one charger, and that means I can charge every day. So the charging more frequently, every two, like every two to three days or daily, uh, is recommended for longevity in the battery life. So I didn't know that, and I now know that. So uh, I do that regularly. The other thing is uh, that I hadn't heard again from Kia Hyundai until now, and again, this is not Kia information, I should just clarify this is Hyundai information, and uh, it should be equally valuable to both sides. So. Avoid extended periods of heavy acceleration. Now, those of you that know this, um, those of you that have these cars, they are fast. They are quick to accelerate. I shouldn't say uh, they're quick more than fast. So high speed, top speed driving, you know, they're like every other car, but acceleration is extremely good. 295 foot-pounds of torque in these cars. 291, between 291 and 295 pounds of foot-pounds of torque in these cars. So that's a lot of torque and that makes instant torque, and that's good for acceleration. So it says avoid extended periods of heavy acceleration. I don't think what they're saying is don't floor the car, don't give it a lot of, you know, throttle. I always say give it a lot of gas. Uh, don't give it a lot of, I don't think they're saying that. I think they're saying don't do it all the time. Don't drive like a crazy person. Um, I think the reason they need to say that is because in a gas car, you know, your typical young driver will find that entertaining, whereas in an EV, 
everybody who gets in just wants to drive it fast the whole time because it's fun. And uh, I don't think there's any issues with doing that, but like a gas car, drive it sort of reasonably and that will help maximize your EV battery life. A strange one that I had never heard before, and I'll tell you anyways whether I understand it or not, is, um, yeah, don't drive like Peter. Tim says don't drive like me. More don't drive like Tim. Tim used to be a race car driver, so don't drive like Tim. First of all, if you're finding any of this helpful, do me a favor, give the video a like, or a, a like on the video. That tells me that we can continue to do EV uh, videos. If I don't see a ton of likes, then I tend to stay away from that topic for a little bit. So if you think this topic is helpful and you want me to do more, give the video a like and that just lets me know. All right, the, la the second last one, park in the shade. So this is one that I can't do at work. Um, I can do it at home, I happen to have a garage. Not everybody can do this. I have, actually James, one of our salespeople, he has an EV, he uh, can't park in the shade. And I don't think it's the end of the world. I think the idea is you wanna make sure that you um, keep that battery temperature reasonable, avoiding that battery getting really, really hot. Um, a lot of these things are to do with battery management. So heavy acceleration can heat up the battery. Parking in the sh uh, sun can heat up the battery. Really what they're trying to do is keep that battery maintained. Now when the car is running, it can really maintain that battery no problem. It can keep that uh, temperature uh, under control and that's what the car is designed to do. When it's parked in the shade on a hot, or when it's parked in the sun on a hot sunny day, just like a hot car can get hot, that battery underneath can get hot. So that's something that I hadn't heard, um, but that's what they're recommending for maximizing EV battery life. So just something to know of. The final thing is lowering your maximum charge limit can help extend battery life. So a lot of people you hear, um, they tell you to only charge to 80%. And basically that's what they're talking about. Uh, unless you need the full range of the car, if you charge to 80%, that's gonna help you maximize battery life. So I found that interesting. Um, I, of course, wasn't charging very regularly, only when necessary. And I was charging to 100% every time, because why wouldn't I? So we've changed the way we do our car at my house, and I'm not saying you need to, but um, again, these are best practices. It's not like the cars can't charge to 100% every time anyways, but I'll show you what I mean. If you haven't uh, done this, we'll hop in my personal car here. I don't have any interior lighting, auxiliary interior lighting, I should say. Um, those of you who watch my videos regularly you will know that um, we do have uh, extra interior lighting in these cars when we do these videos. Mine, I left it off because I'm gonna mainly show you the screen in my car. So we'll confirm this. So here's what you get. Of course, my car is the lower range car. So don't be thrown off by this. If you're an American waiting for this car, you won't have higher range cars. And, uh, oh, my phone is there, that's awesome. Okay, there we go. So what we have here is in the charge management section. You can click on this, you can click on, Tim, can you give me a thumbs up or let me know if you can still hear me? I assume I'm going through Bluetooth right now. Uh, so we are gonna go to maximum charge percentage. On AC, my vehicle is set to 80%. So there we go, you can hear me better now. Yeah, of course, it hooked up to my Bluetooth, so of course you can hear me better. All right, good to know that you can hear me. In my own car, my car's gone Bluetooth. All right, so uh, sorry about that, but my, my phone jumped on the Bluetooth in my own personal car. So you can see what happens here. Now that coloring is not correct. That's actually better when I put my finger by it. It's more orange than yellow. Um, but you can set the charge here to any percentage you want down to 50% or back up to 100% by hitting that button. So what I do is I bring it to 80%. Skip, uh, I just saw 2016 years so old. Oh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so there we go. So yeah, you can park uh, or you can set the charge to 80% and that is what they recommend to maximize your battery life. So I'm gonna cancel it because it's exactly where it was. So you can see it's set to 80% on the AC charger. I didn't change it on the DC charger. If I ever use a fast charger, I wanna decide that it accidentally goes to 100%, that's okay with me. And uh, all right, so let me hit my home button here. We'll turn the car off. Okay, we're gonna lose uh, better audio. I assume you guys can still hear me again. I'm back off the Bluetooth. Obviously not as good, but still hear me. Somebody give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me or something. Can we still hear me? I know there's a delay, so I'll wait for you guys to come back. All right, good, still good. Perfect, thank you. All right, so those are maximizing battery life things. So uh, back to normal. Yeah, normal's not great, but hey, it is normal. Uh, all right, so the, um, those are how to sort of maximize battery life. One other thing I wanna talk about is, um, we'll talk about fender benders, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. 
Um, and that's sort of, that's actually interesting information because I don't think that's the same everywhere. So one thing I want to show you here, and I'm not sure if I can, we're going to talk basic maintenance. Of course, there's no oil changes. Uh, there's a number of inspections that you have to do, but you don't have to do any, um, yeah, oil changes, the regular service that you would come in for, say, every 6,000 kilometers or something on a gas car, you don't do on this car. One thing we recommend doing is brake services. Now, I want to show you on this car, I don't know if you can see it, but see the cross hatching there on the brake disc? There's a little bit of cross hatching, which is the diagonal lines on that um, thing. So I don't know if anybody can see that. Maybe you guys can jump in. Tell me if you can sort of see those diagonal lines. Those are cross hatching of brand new rotors. You'll see that on a gas car as well. Um, yeah, you can sort of see them there, I think. There we go. So uh, that cross hatching is a sign that the brakes have not really been used on this car. So we're going to talk about, yeah, maintenance right now. Now let me show you on my car here. This car has 10,000 kilometers on it. You can see there's going to be some rust on these. But if we look carefully, oh, I can't get the right light. Just below where it's wearing there, in this section here, you can still see the cross hatching on my car. What that means is these brake discs on the front of my car, even with 10,000 kilometers, are like new. I wouldn't be able to show you that cross hatching on a brand new, uh, or on anything but a brand new car. Even with 10,000 kilometers, I still have the cross hatching. So, of course, brakes are going to last longer due to regenerative braking. The one thing we really encourage people to do is a, um, is a brake service. We're going to talk about components under the hood, yeah. So brake service is really important on these cars for maintenance because the brakes have to grab and release. And there's bare metal components in there. There's slider pins and other stuff. So if they grab and don't release, you're going to wear out your brakes prematurely. Now, we do brake services all the time with cars. Every 24,000 kilometers or so, we recommend that on a gas car. EVs, it's very important to remember your brake services. Maybe once a year or so, get those brake services. So they still grab and release as necessary um, because they're hardly ever used and you don't want them rusting, sticking on with thousands of pounds of pressure to stick and not releasing uh, there. So that's one maintenance item that we encourage you to do. Um, I also recommend winter tires in Canada. These eco tires are great for economy. They're not so great for winter traction. Um, so if you throw winter tires on, then you can have your brakes looked at every time when you take the wheels on and off, and that tells you if you need a brake service, or we can have someone tell you if you need a brake service. So that's the other maintenance bit. Uh, we will look under the hood. One other thing I want to show you about an EV, managing charge, those kinds of things. Uh, yeah, Tim's telling you right there, brake service and other things. So Tim's just listed a number of things we can do. I want to talk about EV, or sorry, UVO Intelligence. Now, let's just see if this phone's got a little bit of battery life. I might unplug it. Oops, hold on. Everybody wants to know the password to Pat's backup back phone. Backup phone. It's 11111. Oh, I've been logged out. Hold on a second here. Let me see if I can jump back in. All right, let me set this down. You guys can look at the car. I got to get logged back in. I need two hands. So I won't drop that off the table this time. All right, bear with me for a second. I should have clicked the remember me on this app, but this works. Okay, hold on. I have to enter my email address. So this is actually worth sticking around for. I know this is where the video gets boring, but uh, this is where you should stick around. So Kia Canada knows that I have, uh oh, I entered something wrong here. I'm just entering a pa password, which is why you're not on camera. Oh, this isn't good. Wait a minute. Okay, so Tim, bear with me. My password, oh, hold on, bearforkia.com maybe? No, it's not CA. Oh boy. This is making for great video, I know. There we go. Nope. I can't get logged in. So we're going to show you Uvo Intelligence tomorrow because it is not letting me log in right now. And if I log in too many times, oh, you know what? I know what I did wrong. I didn't do Brantford Kia. Hold on. This is what happens when I rush. Okay, we're about to show you something that's worthwhile. Okay, it's going to allow me to come in here. Here is Uvo Intelligence. I'm going to exit this. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the phone down, you're going to look at the car. Actually, we're going to look at my own car. So bear with me here. 
there's the car that I can control right now. So I'm controlling that from this app. Now this phone is a little bigger for my small hands. I wanna show you one thing very cool. So first of all, I should point out, Kia Canada knows that I'm not happy with the speed of this app. This uh, app goes to the internet. It's not always the fastest, that's just the way it is. But this is a really cool thing. There's my car right there. It tells me that orange perimeter around the car tells me that the car is unlocked. All of those green things tells me that the hood, the doors, and the trunk are closed. And you can see on an EV, 67% is my battery, which for me is 158 kilometers. And you can see if I plugged it in, 55 minutes on a level two charger would get me to, to full. Uh, so this app is super helpful for EVs because it tells me that where my battery is at while the car is sitting down. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and I can refresh that and get everything up to date if I lock the car. We'll do that later. Oh, I just hit refresh anyways. Yeah, so the delays, somebody's saying that's kind of normal, so uh, bear with me, I just hit refresh, and of course now it's gonna do its whole thing searching for the car. The other thing I should point out is, that makes this a little harder to do, is this building used to be a computer's building, and it actually is very difficult to get radio signal in here, and that's gonna play an effect, because the car has to be on the Bell network, and this building is a little bit uh, insulated for radio. So there we go, we got it back. So that does delay it in this video. All right, so one thing I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna close this. Here's the page you get if you have any car with UVO Intelligence. Now you'll notice on this car, it says climate in the center. That would be an on off button for regular cars, but I also have buttons down here that show you charge, state of charge, target state of charge, excuse me. So I could set the schedule of charging, I could set the target state of charge, which is that 80% that I set it to. And you can also do other things like lock and unlock the car, we can flash the lights. So for instance, if the car is unlocked and I walk away from it, I get a notification on the top of my cell phone that tells me that my car is unlocked, which is super helpful. I go to the grocery store, if I leave the car unlocked, it'll tell me the car's unlocked. More importantly, when my wife comes home, unloads the groceries from the car, and leaves it unlocked in my driveway, I know. Ask me how I feel that. It's okay, my wife will never watch this video, we're good. Oops. All right, so let me just show you how this works. I can start the car, but of course, a normal car, I can start the car by hitting that. Mine just sets the climate, which we could set. Uh, climate settings, I can show you. Here's what I did with my car. I have some favorites set. So when it's in the winter, inside, outside, and summer, what that means is when I start the car up, in the winter, if the car is inside, I don't need the windshield to defrost, so I can use it inside, if it's inside the garage. If the car is outside, I can set the windshield to defrost as well. These are all presets you can make to anything you want. My car is set up like that. In the summer, I can set to 21 degrees and off it goes. So that's how the climate setting works or this remote start in your gas car. Let me show you how it works real quick. Actually, we'll just flash the lights. Now nah, we'll unlock the car. There's unlocking the car, I won't show you my password. There we go, so we jump in, I click that. It will tell me here, we'll watch the lights blink here. Oh, I think I unlocked, so maybe the lights won't blink because the car is already unlocked. There, it just blinked there. So you can see that that worked and it'll give me a delayed response here that it does work. So, there you go. Remote service door lock unlock was successful. So now the car will lock if I don't touch the door handle. Anyways, that's a basic overview of UVO Intelligence. I'm happy to show you a whole bunch more in there. There's a lot, actually a lot more in there. You can see a state of health of the vehicle. You get a monthly report of the health of the vehicle. Uh, you can tell you, it can tell you how much battery you've used, how many charges. Why did I get gray if I could have got green, red, or blue? Okay, that's actually a very good question because there's a reason. I, this gray was not my first choice. Uh, anyways, so that's UVO Intelligence. That's the tech of these cars. That's the basics. I'm gonna jump into your questions now, and if you have any more, feel free to ask right now. Uh, we'll talk about, um, oh boy, there's a lot of questions there. Let me just scroll up on my screen here for a second. Okay, so real quick. Uh, if I got a fender bender, is it more costly? Uh, they say it is more costly. Some say yes, some say no. Our body shop, um, uh, it depends. I mean, the car is more costly, so if your insurance is covering it, fender bender, something like the body panels, they're the same for, uh, like that's front fender's the same on this car as it is on the regular sole. Same thing with the doors, that kind of thing. So not a huge ex different expense, but sometimes maybe someone's charging you different. I would shop around. Uh, Kona EV or Soul EV, I'll tell you a Soul EV and we'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, internal components under the hood, we'll look under the hood in a second. Uh, chain summer tires, winter tires, brake service, yep, there we go. Uh, somebody, too much reach on salty roads, okay. Under the hood, the accessory battery goes two, three years. No, I don't, we haven't had issues with our accessory batteries in these cars, so there we go. Uvo delays, okay, let me jump in. All right, so you asked why I got gray, we'll jump with that as well. We're gonna show you under the hood, we'll show you in the car if you wanna see as well, a couple of the differences between the two trim levels. So, I ordered the blue. My wife decided she liked the blue, this is gonna be her car to drive around most of the time. The reason I didn't get the blue 
is because the uh, gray one came into compound and we got a call from Kia head office saying, basically, we know you've got the blue one on order, but if your customer wants to switch to a gray one, you can have the gray one today. Well, that customer happened to be me. So uh, blue's too flashy, there you go. So uh, I called my wife and said, hey, do you want to wait till uh, two, three weeks or more for the blue one, or do you want to get the gray one today? And she said, let's get gray. So that's why I got gray. I'm not into the highlighter green myself, although we have another uh, uh, employee that drives that uh, green that... Uh, uh, space green, they call it. So that's why I got that. Neptune blue is what I wanted, that's right. Um, somebody was saying, uh, check under the hood. We'll show the batteries, because there is a car battery in here. And uh, if you want to see differences in the cars, we can do that space green. There we go. Sometimes I forget the names of the colors when I'm live on videos, so Tim's always there to bail me out. All right, one thing I like about the Soul, you do have the struts, so you don't have a little rod you have to put up. Uh, yeah, you see gray everywhere. I'm, I'm a big fan of not the colors you see everywhere, which is white, gray, black. Um, but yeah, I ended up with that. A couple things to show you. The engine, or the motor, excuse me, is very low in the car. You can kind of see across there, you see a lot more stuff there, a lot more cleared out space. So you've got low weight here, and you've got a regular car battery. That's what the other person was talking about there. And uh, there is, on every car we have, a car battery, except for the Nero Hybrid. So every EV, every gas car has a car battery. It's come part of the shared componentry. Things like the uh, stereo system uses that car battery. So they do have a car battery in all of these cars, which is kind of an interesting fact. Um, EV is really low in there. We are working, Kia is working on several EVs. I expect in the future, uh, when they go away from the shared platform, that they will have uh, a sort of like Tesla, a frunk in, this, in the front. So you'll have storage space in the front on a future EV. Uh, shared componentry is a really good way to do EVs because crash tests and all that are kind of standardized for the car. There's a lot of uh, ability to make things, uh, just even to test things out. Uh, something like, let's say, wheel bearings or something like that would have been used in this car. If there's any problems with the door handles, the same door handles in every car, you know. So you have a lot more cars out there that Kia has uh, access to parts and pieces. Um, anyways, that's always a surprise for people in there. All right, I know I missed a couple questions. Don't want to stand out, yep. Uh, okay, is there any other questions I missed? Tim, you can jump in on there. I think I got a bunch. We can show you inside the cars. I will show you real quick in this car compared to mine, just some differences if you are comparing these two cars uh, in Canada. Oh, the other thing I want to say, remember we were talking about my car that I had to get a gray one now or wait weeks for the, uh, or wait weeks for the blue one? This car in front of me is available for immediate delivery. You can take it home tomorrow if you want. Uh, it's ready to go. Um, we have EVs in stock and we can get EVs pretty quickly. We don't have Nero EVs in stock. Well, that'll be a while, but a Soul EV, you can take it home literally tomorrow. So if you're thinking about an EV and you don't want to wait anymore, just come by this one. Still government rebates, unless uh, Tim corrects me, but I'm 99% sure they still have rebates on this car. All right, we power the car up here. Kia Soul inside. Let me just turn on the accessory lighting here for a second. A couple things you have is a heads-up display on that screen right there, which you can sort of see, but it won't focus right on there. Um, it's much clearer and much bigger in person, but hard to show you. There is a heads-up display on the limited version. So my car has the same thing, lower level, higher level, same thing through here. Auto climate control, same thing again through there. And Pat, there we go, federal rebate still available. They did say they may run out. So yeah, so they may run out of this federal rebate. They've warned us about that. They budget a certain amount of money, and once that money is used, they have to decide to renew it, obviously with the government having other priorities right now. We'll have to see what happens. But like I said, if you buy this car today, you can take it home tomorrow. Two USB plugs in there. Wireless phone charging is down here. So the gas uh, soul actually has a separate tray for the wireless phone charge. The electric vehicles have it down there, but there is wireless phone charging in both the cars. This one has... Rump roasters, heated seats, and ventilated seats. My car doesn't have the ventilated seats, and my car is cloth, not leather. So that's the premium versus the limited. And everything else, uh, pretty much the same. Parking brake, the same there. I will show you up here, in the limited version, you have a silver plate there. You can see in the center of your screen. I call it silver, it's a dark gray, I guess. Same thing around the doors. Now there is ambient lighting in here. You can sort of see the red is showing through. Very hard to show in this car, but there is some ambient lighting. There's also ambient lighting in that area, which again, you just can't see because it's in the light. Um, but this car has silver. My car, you'll see in a second, has just the white. Uh, but very similar, smart cruise control in both cars. Range is the big difference. We mentioned 383 kilometers of range. This car has 94% battery, 408 kilometers of range. So it knows it's gonna have uh, uh, good uh, range in there. The Limited, uh, yeah, Albert, that's right, the Limited also has the sunroof, which I can show you in a second. 
but yeah, other than that, very similar cars. Harman Kardon sound system is probably the other big piece. You have a speaker in the center here. You have a subwoofer in the back. I will show you the Teddy. Those of you waiting to see the Teddy, we will uh, explain what we mean by that in one second. Uh, the other difference is here in the trunk, there's Teddy Bear. You can see Teddy doesn't look like he's that roomy because over here you have the cover and in the back on the right side here, you have a Harman Kardon speaker. The other thing in this car, the floor is up. You can set the floor to two levels and I wanna show you the difference. I threw Teddy in there, he looks a little tight. Now watch the difference as I throw him in the trunk of my car because in my car I have the floor removed and I have that cargo cover off. So we'll show you that real quick. Let me just pop the trunk. I'm holding Teddy with the wrong hands. All right, so you can see much lower floor in this car and that's just because I lowered it. It was on the rails up higher. Car's not perfectly clean because it's a real car that I use. More importantly, my wife and kids use. So you can see Teddy now has significantly more room. He sits lower in the car. So that lowering that floor makes him a lot more space. Uh, he also has a little bit more foot space because I don't have a speaker there. But that's really the difference between the two car. Um, that cargo cover, the sunroof, heads-up display, range being the big difference, and the leather seats with ventilated seats. Uh, there we go. I think I've covered everything that I can cover in this video. We can do more UVO Intelligence videos in the future if you want to see. Um, problem is I'll probably just have to use my car. So if you want to dig into that in a future video, we can do that. I try to stick around 30 minutes. We're just past 30 minutes now. If you have questions about the future of EVs, anything else like that, I'll stick around for a few minutes and answer anything you want. And then we'll wrap this video up and uh, we'll move on. So I want to thank everyone for joining us. And like I said, I'm just waiting if you guys have questions because I know there is a delay. Uh, if you haven't given this video a thumbs up and uh, you like seeing EV videos, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That lets me know. Why isn't there front and rear pa parking sensors? Okay, good question. No parking sensors on the front of any of the soles. So I think the reason there's not parking sensors on the front of any of the soles is because... Um, there are, uh, it's, it's sort of the same basic bumper and they don't do that on the sole. 360 cameras, you don't need it in this car, to be very honest. You're not that high, you can see around yourself. Um, it would be cool, but it's an extra thing you don't really need. The other reason there's no parking sensors in the rear, and I'll show you why. Um, now let's be honest, it's a, they make decisions about all kinds of equipment, but the nice thing is I can start the car right up here. I'm in my own personal car again, so we're gonna get better sound. All right, so I'm in reverse. The reason there's no is because you have the best camera system in any uh, car that I've seen. These are super, super clear. I could count the grills markings in that grill over there. And the other day we had a Honda in here and you couldn't count all those little holes in the grill. You can count the thing. So the reason you don't need parking sensors is because you can really see. And if you want, I'll just drive my car back and you can see how well I can see. We'll stop right at that line. I can stop exactly at the line because I can see perfectly and I can count those grills, I can count the dirt on there. So you don't need, uh, I think parking sensors would just be overkill on this car to be very honest. Uh, you can see very well around, the part of the sales pitch of a Soul is the visibility is excellent around this car. Uh, you can see everything, it's hard to show with a camera, but uh, camera's in a different spot than my head. But um, yeah, that's the short answer of why I don't think there's parking sensors and I, it's not something I would require on this car. Uh, something like Telluride sits a little higher up um, when you have a car that's higher up, you can around you. So I really like the um, 360 camera on the higher up. Even the Stinger, lower down car, uh, a little bit less visibility than something like a Soul, harder to see. Uh, yeah, so I don't think you need them. That's probably why they don't have them. Any other questions there? I will uh, wrap this video up in a second. I think I got to that. Bluetooth again, yeah. I should start using my own car more often, we'll have better sound. Can the sole support roof rails? Absolutely. So um, if you get a regular gasoline sole, you can get the GT line package, which gives you roof rails. That's on the premium and the limited. If you have an electric vehicle like these, you have to go with the aftermarket. Uh, the two brands I would recommend are Yakima and Thule. Thule brand, you can get right from us. So that's, they're not, uh, they don't necessarily say Thule brand. I think they usually do, but they come right from Kia's accessory stores. You can buy them from us. They fit the car perfectly. They work great. Uh, HO, so somebody's asking about uh, HOV lanes. Oh yeah, in Ontario we have HOV lanes. If you have green plates like mine, uh, green lettered plates, you can drive on the HOV lanes. So um, 
with just one person in the car. So that means the high occupancy vehicle lanes, and let me tell you, that saves a ton of time. So Tim's saying we have two ready for delivery. So I knew we had the one in stock. I think, Tim, the other one's black, is that correct? So two EVs are available for immediate delivery. Uh, if you want an EV and you don't want to wait, buy it from us. Somebody asked me, Kona versus Soul, 100% Soul. Uh, or Nero, the Kona has a touch more rated range. I'm not sure how much more real world range it gets because these cars really outperform that range usually. Uh, they are bigger, these cars. You can fit people in them, front, back, trunk, everything is better um, about these cars other than the rated range on the Kona is a little bit longer, but I'm not sure if that's a real range. So there you go, black and white we have available. So these, if you want this car in black, available today, you want it in white, available today. Like Pat mentioned, the government discount's still on, $5,000 off the MSRP on these cars. You can get them today, and uh, there we go. I wanna thank everyone for joining us. We've gone a little bit over time again. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. We had a few more people than I thought we'd have on an EV. Tomorrow we're gonna talk uh, Kia as well. I'm open to suggestions, so we're gonna wrap this video up, but feel free to comment on this video and let us know if there's something you wanna see tomorrow. As always, I have a few ideas, but I like to see what you guys have as well. And uh, we'll be back every day this week at two o'clock for a little look in our video bay. Thanks everybody for joining. Have a great day.